Good afternoon. In this video, I want to recommend a book for you to understand this dis dispensational salvation issue. And this is from the point of view of Gluckman. Funny how these guys don't recommend you read the books. Because then you see what kooks they are. You go back to uh, what Robert Blake was saying. And it's basically just saying what Gluckman said. No Old Testament saint had a source of salvation. No, no Old Testament saint was regenerated. No Old Testament saint was saved. According to them, but then, according, then Buckman will say uh, in, uh, in his commentary on Luke, saved Jews and Gentiles were in the Abraham's bosom. How did he get saved? What was the criteria? Oh, it changed. Ruckman talks about seven exceptions. What Ruckman did is create a hybrid system. He came out of a, a Methodist back, background uh, in a school in uh, Bob Jones University. Bob Jones University didn't allow interracial dating people. Remember that. They didn't allow Christian interracial dating. It was against the rules. Real Christian. But he loved Bob Jones Sr. And when you look at what he talks about, he creates a hybrid system. The Old Testament was Methodist, and the New Testament is Baptist. Church age. Church age is all Baptist. They have eternal security. Salvation by faith alone. The Methodists, they could get salvation, but they're always worried about losing it. The Armenians. That's the system he created. He created that system in order to do away with problems of eternal security in passages like Hebrews. And then the argument is the same, the same argument makes Kim makes, and the same argument uh, Breaker makes. And you wonder why I get on these guys. Let me tell you something. The arrogance these guys have is incredible. Breaker goes up there. Certain shallow pastors, they don't understand the difference. And then, of course, Breaker is confusing a different gospel with a different plan of salvation. People understood different gospels back as well back as far as 1909, I'm sure, further back than that, with the Schofield notes and with Larkin. I understand different gospels. But it's always by faith alone. But now I can get the book. All this video, all these videos. It's not expensive. Now this is all correct. This is this is not a problem. This is locking. This is basically uh, going from eternity to eternity, uh, and actually it's probably an advancement on locking. And this this is not a problem. Dispensational salvation is the problem. That's not in here. This lays out the plan of God from eternity to eternity. And explains the progression. But uh, I'll just read here some uh, some issues here. Let's see here. So the tissue when the New Testament begins. So he says that means the New Test Old Testament itself has two time periods in one from Adam to Moses. See Romans five fourteen, and the other from Moses to Christ. See John one seventeen. See they always want to talk about under the law and before the law. Yeah, do faith works in both of them. And neither could save you. They know the law can't save you, but somehow they keep talking about faith, work, faith and works, faith and works. But logical consistency was never their problem. They just, they, you know, they don't worry about it. They just yell and scream and holler and jump up and down. You're not rightly dividing. See how simple this is? See how simple this is? We just take this and we just remove that from New Testament salvation and all the cults now can't have, have no excuses. They're going to believe in faith alone. <laughs> it's salvation. Um, he talks about Larkin here. What is dispensationalism? Clarence Larkin's dispensational truth is the real granddaddy of all the work done since 1929. It is a superb scriptural work, but in construction the chart, constructing the charts, the time out uh, element is very con con uh, conspicuous. It has to be. The law was given at a certain time in a certain place. Christ died on the cross at a certain time in a certain place, etc. Larkin's charts are well done. They are excellently drawn, and everything in them is, is true scripturally and can be found in any edition of a King James Bible. Yeah, and Larkin didn't teach faith. Uh, faith works. Um, let's see. Anything else he's got here? 
the dispensation of the grace of God was the grace of God dispensed to Paul to give him in a certain position where Paul could reveal mysteries to him. Yeah, that's true. Um, there are in the book of Acts ten chapters that are crucial understanding a gradual transition from Peter to Paul, from Moses to Christ, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, and from salvation by faith and works. There we go. From salvation by faith and works to salvation by grace through faith without works. What are, what are the apostles who saved by works in the kingdom of gospel? What, 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 you know, what are the, what, which are the apostles? And they were being kept. And they, had, they had no security, 11, the 11 apostles. And what follows, we're going to look at, locate our periods of time by covenants, agree, agreements between God and man, the simple interventions by God to set up an agreement. Uh, a dispensation is not a period of time, but a manner of method in which God sets up during a period of time which he will operate during that period. Exactly. No problem with that. Covenants are historical. The Davidic covenant, which if they quiet, they say that's, that's the eternal security given to David, is really a, a covenant, unconditional covenant made of David. David's heir would sit on the throne. And that do with his eternal security. And then he's got uh, lo locating uh, time periods, uh, which is not a problem. And then he's got no exception to the rules. So now we're going to the Old Testament and say, well, this is exception to the rule. Now this is exception to the rule. And that guy, this is, he's got exceptions all over the place. Um, let's see here. In our second case, David has a special dispensation. Uh, adultery or murder in the Old Testament is to be put to death. You are to take it. No satisfaction for the life of a murder. David was both. David is both. Uh, God said David killed Uriah. Neither David nor Bathsheba were put to death, although the Lord demanded this. Both of them were adulterers. He shall show be put, be put to death. He didn't. Grace. There's grace in, right from Genesis 3. Under the law of Moses and the Mosaic Covenant. So David found grace and he was spared. He also had to confess that sin before he was going to lose the Holy Spirit in uh, Psalm 51, the joy of the Holy Spirit. Uh, let's see here. Uh, covenants. Let's see here. Covenants. That's not really a problem. Adam, Noah, and Abraham were saved by grace through faith. While their works, see Hebrews 11, 7, 9, showed they had the right kind of faith. James 2, 24. Showed. So what's that have nothing to do with their salvation? Adam, he says, they, notice he puts the word, uh, while their works, Adam's works didn't show anything. Adam's not in the Hall of Fame. But see the writing there, people. This is Gene Kim. The clever wording. Their works, whose works? It wasn't Adam's work. He wasn't in there. Noah's works were in there. Abraham's works were in there. But they were something to do with the salvation. The faith showed, showed, showed their salvation, showed their faith. But that's it. That's that's uh, you know that's how these guys operate. A semicolon here's in uh, chapter six, a major dispensation. A semicolon in Gen Genesis forty nine eleven separates the two advents of Christ, which turn out to be two thousand years apart. That's why I said you go to James, and you see a colon, and you see the, uh, where it talks about uh, where he's saved. He's talking about he, he believed, in, believed in God and it was, was, was counted for righteousness. And then colon, and then he's called the friend of God. There's a time element between this, those, uh, that punctuation. And that reconciles Paul and James. Oh, they make it so complicated. Here's, here's, here's they're talking about two advents. 2,000 years apart being separated by a punctuation mark. They make it so complicated. We can figure it out. Can figure it out, <laughs> and then you got you got uh, Buck, uh, you got uh, Blake talking about uh, you know uh, Abraham's great great faith. He believed when he was a hundred years old that uh, you know he's gonna have uh, he's gonna have Isaac. That came after he was a believer, <laughs> not Genesis fifteen. And uh, Kim saying, "Yeah, he believed in the stars. He believed in the stars. <laughs> Lunatics." Uh, so that's even even Muckman, page forty nine, admits that. Okay, here we go, fifty one, page fifty one. Finally, Exodus nineteen, we arrive we arrive we arrive at a covenant that could properly be called a dispensation as a real period of time. 
This is purely apparent by a sudden switch from God dealing with an individual, as in the case of Adam, Abel, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, etc., to a nation. And that's what that's the footnote that that Schofield was talking about, that he keeps talking about, oh, you see, he's like talking faithful. It's going back to an individual salvation, from a nation, national salvation, to individual salvation. That was the point what uh, Schofield was trying to make. That he goes, oh, see, he's, he's, he's teaching faith works. This is apparent uh, by the sudden switch from God dealing with an individual. Okay, again, we find a radical change in the plan of salvation. Here we go. This time, faith is not mentioned. To tell the scriptural truth about the word faith only occurs two times in the entire Old Testament. Deuteronomy 32.20 and Habakkuk 2.4 and then is man, a man-made faith. Well, it comes from you. All faith comes from you. We think faith comes from you. And God gives you the ability to believe. The gift of God in Ephesians 2 is the plan of salvation, by the way. It's not the gift. It's not, it's not faith. Um, although faith is going to be evidence under this covenant, evidence, evidence, Show something. Uh, it is going to be faith and works. Capital W works. Capital works. What was faith and works before that? You said all these guys had to be saved by faith and works. Now all of a sudden they're making a big deal. Now it's faith, really faith and works, people. A big transition. What is the transition? You said Abel had to be saved by faith and works. Noah was saved by faith and works. Of course, Abel doesn't show up any faith, anything in faith, faith, faith and works. Adam doesn't show up any faith and works. Um... Although faith is going to be evidence under this covenant, it is going to be faith and works from the word go. The word go is given in Exodus, Exodus 24 3. Let's see what Exodus 24 3 says. Exodus 24 3 has the word go. Oh, this is so simple, people. All you have to do is throw out two thirds of the Bible, then say it's a trans transition. Well, from individuals to nation. But it was always faith works, according to him, from Adam. But Adam's not mentioned anywhere in the whole thing. 24.3 And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord had said we will do. Oh, that means faith and works. For salvation. They said they were going to live under the law. They weren't saying you're going to be saved by the law. That, but that shows, see that? We will do that law. They didn't say they were going to be saved by the law. You think God gives the option to melt some people? How are they going to get saved? <laughs> eternally? Okay, guys, you got this choice now. How do you want to be saved by, uh, uh, saved eternally? By the law or by grace? Now they agreed to do the laws. To live under the laws. So they stay in the land. This is the idiocy you get from a Peter Ruckman. But this is, this is the, this is the garbage, people. This is the garbage that Gene Kim Robert Blaker, Angel Sluter, uh, Hoffman, uh, John Davis are teaching you. This is, this is no problem, but the dispensational side, this, this is what they're teaching you. And then calling the other pastors, the shallow pastors. They don't know what I know. Oh, it's so simple. Let's just throw out two thirds of the Bible. Let's just throw it out. We've made everything simple. We just read what says it. They said they read what it says there, and they can't even read what it says there. <laughs> Baker can't understand uh, the, when uh, Abraham was saved, way before he was 100 years old, Genesis 15. Kim can't even read the passage. He writes it down. He reads it. He writes down, and Abraham believed in the stars. This guy's got a PhD. <laughs> can't read. From then on, the prominent element is works. Now, where do you see anything where these guys said they're going to be saved eternally by works? They agreed to the covenant to live on. And those are saved people, by the way. They came out of Egypt. Those are saved people. Already. Curtis Hudson, John R. Rice, Robert Summer, Bob Jones III said it was a New Testament. This is New Testament salvation. Looking forward to the cross. Capital. That's the big thing. That can't be. Your salvation is not identical like there was. Under the Mosaic law, the blessings and cursings, blessings and cursings, are dependent on works. Yeah, we know that. That's not salvation. If you have any doubts about it, see, now he just said, he set up a, a, an argument. Under the Old Testament law, blessings and cursings, what does blessing and cursing have to do with eternal salvation? Nothing. Yeah, we know. Under the old Mosaic law, it was blessings and cursings. And they'll say life and death. Physical life and death. If you have any doubts about it, New Testament salvation is given at the exact 
uh, polarity of this plan. Romans 10, oh, here we go, Romans 10, boy. Romans 10, Romans 10 will do this. <laughs> Romans 10, boy. Paul appropriates a Deuteronomic a passage, here's a word for you, and deliberately alters it to make it match the demands of New Testament salvation. Read Romans 10, 6-7, and compare it with the original, the original, quote-unquote, in Deuteronomy 30, verse 12, 13. You see the faculties of the modern fundamental and conservative schools simply didn't know what they were talking about. See, when I call them ignorant, remember, what was going on? He's got everybody else ignorant. Now, he gives the other schools. It's very interesting. This has the Nicolaitan attitude. This is why actually college, uh, Christian schools, are, uh, colleges are bad. The attitude. You don't have to deal with the schools, people. You gotta deal with the actual believer in the Pope, sitting in the Pope, the pew. No one cares what the schools teach. You got Chad out there, average Christian. He's reading Noah. And he says, this is what Noah, Noah's a just man. <laughs> great, he say, man, you read Noah 6 and 9. And then he was told about the flood. That's, the reason you have a King James Bible is not because the listen idiots from, come, come from a, a Christian school. The reason you have a, a, a and all these, the ones he's talking about all deny the King, you know, would correct the King James Bible for that purpose, so they'd be Nicolaitans over you. He's a Nicolaitan over you using the King James Bible. And he would say the same thing. He would get up there and say, well, you can't really understand what you're reading there. <laughs> and then he said, my schools, there's schools in that. Now, the average Christian would read, the, read that Bible and say, no one's saying by fate, by works. I can understand, I can understand the difference between physical death and spiritual death. But he goes, you're like, yapping about the schools. See, it's all about the schools these guys are fighting against. It's all about the school breaker went to. He's got a diploma for him. It's all school about the Kim, school Kim went to. You know, he has a whole book defending Buckman nonsense. He talked, uh, when defending the King James Bible, Ruckman was always against the go, you know, he, he was dis, disowned by, uh, Bob Jones University. You know, because he was defending the King James Bible against the Greeks and stuff like that. Well, that's what these guys, these guys are more loyal to the schools than they are to the Bible. You see, the faculties in the modern fundamental and conservative schools simply don't know what they're talking about. What is worse, to hide their sins of ignorance and fidelity, they have to set up to terrorize any Baptist who believes what what you just read. We believe what we read. <laughs> terrorize. <laughs> they terrorize the Baptist. The Baptists understood from their Schofield notes what was going on. The problem is you got idiots coming from schools that don't know what was going on. <laughs> That's the problem. And the guys in the pews were smarter than the guys who were teaching them from their, their stupid schools. They do this by saying the scriptural teaching given in scripture is a heresy. See, he just puts up something and says, hey, you know, they don't show, that proves my point. <laughs> no, it didn't prove anything. It proves you can't read, uh, This is sufficient to scare the pants off many an otherwise good and godly man. So in other words, the Baptist sitting in the pew with the Schofield notes saying, not, you know, we're not looking forward to the cross. These guys weren't looking forward to the cross. They understood different uh, Gospels, but they understood what you were saved by faith alone. Because God's character won't allow anything else. And understand the you know, dispensation, but understanding that, uh, and according to Schofield note, he understood James and John Paul. He had no problem with it. Reconciled once before God, once before man. No problem with it! What do you think Ruckman got his learning from? You think Ruckman, Ruckman got, got a Schofield Bible from his mother and one read it through the first time through four times. Then he read the guy got locked in a mansion somewhere and he read that through four, eight times. Anything, lock, anything Ruckman learned correct, he didn't get from himself. He learned from other, other, uh, other men. Some of the stuff he corrected correctly in Schofield, some, some errors in Schofield. But he fouled up worse than ever Schofield ever could. His dispensational salvation throughout two thirds of the Bible, two thirds of these people don't have an assurance of salvation. You got Breaker in there talking about now they're talking about Breaker talking about saying, Well, you, you went to they had to go back to Abraham's bosom to preach the gospel, but they went to the spirits to decide where the, the spirits were held captive in the prison, those who left their first estate and made with human women, and that was to show the victorious proclamation the idea that the uh, uh, victory had been won on the cross. Remember also, these guys, Ruckman talk, uh, talked about, you know, putting their sins, taking their sins and leaving them in hell. What? <laughs> Bizarre stuff. And look at Kim's stuff that pops up. 
How is the Antichrist going to live? He doesn't mind the Antichrist. He doesn't feel anything about it. Not certain that in Scripture. Clearly then, the salvation, quote unquote, and the Great Tribulation is a combination of faith and works. He's, he, this is like this just certain. Clearly, this is in there. Exactly as it showed up originally in Exodus and Deuteronomy. And it, goes, it says here, uh, let me go back here. Obviously, the law that came by Moses is not is not great, the grace and truth that came by Jesus Christ. No, it's the point of the, the grace and truth that came by Jesus Christ. The law was good. I don't want the law, but the law was the point to. So when Jesus Christ showed up, says, "Yeah, that's him." Yeah, that the law <laughs> pointed to that. The two are, uh, are so different that two different songs had to be arranged to sing about them. <laughs> this song of Moses, the song of Moses, and the song of the Lamb. Uh, in the tribulation, the song of Moses connected with keeping the Mosaic commandments. No one keeps the Mosaic commandments in the tribulation. The commandments that can, uh, uh, they keep are the commandments that we keep. Loving God and loving thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, don't keep, how can Mosaic law? It's no nation. I mean, it's basically, uh, uh, there's nothing you keep. Clear then salvation, okay, and yet great tribulation is a combination of faith and works. Someone is scared half out of the wits to tell the truth about tribulation, salvation, Old Testament salvation, and all. See that? All those guys got it wrong. But Ruckman got it right. And he's, everyone else is scared. Under the Mosaic law, salvation is such a shifty, indefinite thing that to this day there are theologians who think that physical death was the only retri retribution for sin in the Old Testament. Yeah. Physical death as opposed to spiritual death. That's what uh, Kim tried to bring up Exodus 18. That's what they all bring up Exodus 18. And they could bring up to Jesus Christ and to the Jews there who, aren't, who aren't, won't believe him, he's going to die in their sins. And soul there yeah, was deal with physical life in, in that case. You go to Exodus 14, Noah, Job, and uh, Daniel mentioned, and they could only save their own souls, physical life, with their righteousness. They couldn't save their sons and daughters. Unlike Abraham, for instance, could pull, still could pull a lot out from that being destroyed in Sodom and Gomorrah. That's blessing by association. That's physical life. Of course, they never mention a lot. Lots not even mentioned anywhere, people. Lot like disappears, except in their footnotes. Lots like a type of New Testament believer who lost everything. Well, how do you get saved? No comment. <laughs> the soul that sinned, it shall die. Yeah, physical. It's physical death. Well, obviously, just like Genesis nineteen twenty, Genesis twelve thirteen. Obviously, a nine day old baby that has not been circumcised uh, does not go to hell. Yeah. Um, what does it say here? Let me see. The soul that sinneth it shall die. Is physical death where it occurs? Okay, he's pointing out to all the points that there's it's physical death. Yeah, <laughs> it's always physical death. If you, you say it by faith, and that's what saves you eternally. These guys don't believe you get regeneration, Old Testament saints. They don't believe. Because they said some things happen differently in New Testament and Old Testament. Circumcision of the, the flesh and the soul. Because, because you have an inner man indwelling the Holy Spirit. The, old, the Holy Spirit wasn't in, uh, in, in, uh, personally indwelling every believer in the Old Testament. He would he'd go into people for particular functions. And then he would leave and come back. They make that like salvation. I'm going to lie to you. Uh, to show to you the true nature of the plan of salvation on the Lord, let us study four characters, Job, Joab, David, Samson, and Saul. Two of these men are uh, as, uh, listed as heroes of the faith in Hebrews, 11, Hebrews chapter 11. Two of them did not show up in any such listing. So what? Adam didn't show up in Hebrews of faith. He's not saved. He listed him as saved. Jonathan's not in there either. Jonathan's not saved. You know, uh, David's friend. See, I mean, I think he was a faith to just that. He was a faith. They did something so unusual, so great that God put them in the heels of faith. Doesn't mean just because you want to end in there, you want saved. This is the lunatics. Uh, let's see here. Joab, faith and trust in the blood did nothing for Joab under the Mosaic law got him killed. Yeah, because he was a murderer and eventually he got killed for it. Oh, here we go. Now think about the two or three years. Let's see here. 
The Holy Spirit left Samson, but returned. The Holy Spirit left Saul, but did not return. The Holy Spirit could have left David, but did not. So what? The Holy Spirit had nothing to do with salvation. Except for regeneration, imputation, and uh, justification. But he didn't dwell if he believed. He can all go back to Larkin for that, people. Everyone knows that. This is, here's your, here the kind you. You know, Old Testament, the Old Testament walk was different from the New Testament. But you want to make an issue there. See, the Holy Spirit, wow, they lost their salvation. Samson didn't lose his salvation because the Holy Spirit left. Samson lost his strength. If, if the Holy Spirit had left David, he would have lost his joy. Not his salvation. And Saul didn't lose his salvation. Saul was going to be with Samuel that day and his sons, Jonathan the saved man. And what he'll say there, say, well, he was in the same place, uh, you know, there's a great gulf. Samuel said, you be with me today. He didn't say, uh, you're going to be separated by a big gulf. <laughs> no, you can be with me. You and your sons will be with me today. This is how they talk. This is how they think. Please, get, just look, if you don't believe me, get the book. Read it for yourself. Read the lies. Read the nonsense. Read the double talk. Read the deception. You can't catch up with these guys in their videos. Now, this explains why the salvation is the same in both testaments. Heretics, heretics, see? They're calling us a heretic. Always cite David when talking about Old Testament salvation. You see, David has promised mercies that no one else in Old Testament has promised. Second, Second Samuel 7.15. The mercies he's promised is that he's not going to lose his line. His heir is going to, his, they'll have an heir on that line. His line won't be shut off like it was Saul. And he quote, he goes seven Samuel, Second Samuel 7.15. Read it. it. Has nothing to do with his eternal security. It has to deal with the line. Unlike Saul, whose line was shut up, this line would continue. Of course, Jesus Christ is in the line of, of, of David. He is the exception to the rule when he has a big capital. They expect you to be stupid, people. That's why he sits there, Kim, in front of a bunch of bumps on the log who don't question him. Yeah, no, amen, amen. No one questions what he put on the board. Amen was saved by believing in the stars. Now, I teach you, you got to make a mistake there. It doesn't mean you believe in the Lord. <laughs> this is so, this is so easy. I'm going to crush them now. I'm going to... Just crushed him. My logic. My, reminds me of uh, Humphrey Bogart, you know, the K Mutiny. Right. So measure the logic. <laughs> I'm just going to crush them. They can't stand being proven wrong. He got proven wrong in Genesis 6. And he's saying that uh, 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 Noah was saved by believing the flood. And then, then he just got screaming, Well, what was he saved by? You never tell us. How about Genesis 3.15? Believe in the seed. That's a shock. <laughs> you never told us. You never tell us what you say by. Um, let's see. The Mosaic Covenant is a vast and comprehensive series of rules, regulations, conditional promises, and threatening scored statutes, commands, commandments, precepts, laws, and memorials. The Decalogue is the heart, uh, is the heart of it, Exodus 20, and the two commandments quoted by Christ and Matthew Chapter 22 of the summation of the Decalogue, spiritual, yeah. We're supposed to keep the same laws, summed up. And the Jew is the same thing. If he, saw, if he kept those two laws, he would have kept all of them. But these are national laws to keep a nation preserved in purity to glorify God. They were a nation of priests. Uh, Paul sums up the law, law up in Romans 13.10 as love. So we're under the law? In that sense. We're not in a bunch of national statutes and things, but we some spirit through the law. When we yield to the, the Holy Spirit, we keep the law. We love. That's how you know you're filled with the Spirit. If you love your neighbor as yourself and you love God, when you don't have any love for your neighbor, you're not filled with the Spirit. You're in your flesh. Um, as love, would, uh, that would be the love to God and love to your neighbor, exactly as Jesus Christ gave it to the Old Testament Jews who were still under the law in Matthew chapter 22. Paul excludes the Sabbath from the Decalogue. That's why it's not part of our, our walk. And does so on purpose. But notice that the moral commandments are said to be good, holy, and spiritual. That's right. Because it's spiritual. But they couldn't save you. They were good laws, but they couldn't save you. Because no one could keep them. No one could stay in love, loving God. That was with the which young ruler came to the Lord 
And he says, I've kept all his commandments. And then the Lord says, first, what do you call me good? There's no one good but God. And these guys think that's a proof of someone who keeps the law in the Old Testament. These nuts. And then the Lord says, okay, fine. You kept, he didn't argue. Now just get, sell all your stuff and follow me. And the guy walks away. <laughs> he was covetous. Um, let's see here. Uh, he says this on page 59 it, it's the fact that these works now make no contribution to the, the salvation of a sinner soul of never did here. their works didn't make any salvation to a sinner soul had to do with the walk in the Old Testament they certainly did as we've just seen here put one point that works added to the salvation of any sinner soul but now they just assert that this is question begging begging the question that's all they do they huff and puff and bluff and ad hominem attacks and get up there and, oh, if these people know what I knew. And, you know, and you can't argue about this. He hasn't made one factual statement regarding salvation by faith, uh, uh, works adding to salvation. He goes here, okay, Galatians 4, 1 through 2, Colossians 2, 16, 2, 20, uh, 22, are produced to prove that anything goes, although the context, uh, Although the context of both pastors without rules and regulations and ethical codes had nothing to do with salvation, they certainly have plenty to do with the life of the child of God under the Pauline gospel of the grace of God. That's what works to it. The life. The walk. Uh, by far the most lengthy list of uh, rules and regulations found anywhere in the Bible. Look at them. Pick it up and read them. You talk about guidelines. You talk about Ten Commandments. Paul puts Moses out of business. Yes! <laughs> then he's going to go to tribulation and say, go to the, under the, do the commandments and believe, and believe in Jesus. And he makes it, they all ballistic, say the word commandments. And here we are, we've got whole things that we're supposed to be doing. And they don't add to our salvation. Double talk, lies, deception. Get the book. I'm not hiding anything. Unlike these guys. You think these guys every day would get up there and say, read this book. You think Kim would get up there. This is the book, people. <laughs> they don't want you to read it. They don't want you to read what Buckman actually writes. Because then you check them and say, what is this guy, nut? You know, that's a rhetorical question. <laughs> talk over, you're all nuts. It's like Max Faust said, to believe this, you have to have a, 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 nut, a, a nut loose. I had a guy emailing me, talking about he had discussions like three hours while breaking. That's what they want to do. They just want to argue with you for three hours. And he can't make a distinction between a gospel changing and salvation changing. That's the problem. He keeps arguing about, well, it's a different gospel. We're not arguing about different gospel. But salvation is by faith alone. It can't be what works. And then he can't even read a logical argument that Paul makes in Romans 4. He can't read it, people. If you don't believe me, watch what he talks about. And he says, now means now, this is like in time, as opposed to, and then he adds but to it. And then he says, well, now means no. No, Paul's now sum up an argument. Now. And then but. And even as. But they've been, they've been, doctr they've been indoctrinated by this lie. These lies. Okay, let me see what the grace of God extends from Genesis 1 through Revelation 22. What would that mean? What would, what would that mean? I should believe grace starts in Genesis 3. But the, because of 4. But the fact is, you go to uh, Romans 11 6. Romans 11 6 says, if it's grace is not of works, it's works is not of grace. You can't mix works and grace. They're all in water. But these, these guys do. Oh no, it's, it's grace, but you have to do works. Ignore them. Well, that's a clear passage. Uh, uh, issues of, of, of interpretation, clear scripture interprets more obscure, obscure scripture. So that means that you've got to harmonize. These guys look at it and say, we just read what it says, and these guys are trying to interpret that. There are obscure scriptures that need to be interpreted. That appear to say something. They don't say. Because the clear scriptures would contradict it. So you go to the clear scriptures, then you've got to go to the more obscure scriptures and say, well, okay, that, we know that's true. What that's saying, so now we've got to harmonize that with that. What are we missing here? It could be a uh, dispensational issue. It could be looking at a particular English word. Like justification has two aspects to it. Petition. They make it bigger of a petition. Petition doesn't always mean going, going to hell. Something it means being drawn back into, into destruction. Physical destruction. Petition. But that's how you do it. And these guys just throw it out the window. We just don't understand. And these cults believe in faith works. Plus, these cults believe in a faith works. There must be a faith works. 
They all, they all can't be wrong. <laughs> That's the argument. They all can't be wrong. I mean, Bob Jones Sr. couldn't have been all wrong on, he was a Methodist, he couldn't be wrong on all these, that, that's, that's where he's coming from. Bob Jones Jr., Bob Jones, uh, uh John, Bob Jones Sr. was a Methodist. And so Buckman looks at him as a mentor. He says, well, he couldn't have been wrong on all those passages. He, he, he clearly is a man of God. He couldn't have mis mis misread all those passages. He just, he just had the wrong time period. He was, he was corrupted by the Bob Jones University. And he came out of it. And all he did was he made a hybrid system. A Baptist system for the New Testament and a, a Methodist system for the Old Testament. And that's what you get. Bob Jr. University, he, Bob, Bob Jones the senior, he couldn't have been wrong on that. They had scriptural basis for saying that. Those are the scriptures. Look at that. Look at that scripture saying that. No, they're all wrong. These guys couldn't figure out salvation. Now, meaning it's not salvation, right? But they couldn't figure out eternal security, you know, because they, well, you have free will, so therefore you could do that. So he would say, oh yeah, they were right in the Old Testament, they just weren't right in the New Testament. So, we have now picked up some great scriptural truths denied by dead Orthodox apostates who died holding to historical positions, like Schofield, like Larkin. The historical position, remember, these guys aren't teaching you. What dispensationalists have, have traditionally hold, even in, as, as today, uh, uh, as, uh, likewise today, rejecting a faith work system. We have learned that, that that before the law, a man was saved by grace through faith. If his works showed he had faith, if his works showed he had faith, in other words, the faith works. He's trying to con you to say before the law there was an actual grace through faith, but then he adds on works. See how how he how he said that people. Under the Mosaic law, a man was saved by grace through faith and works. Well, he was saved by grace through faith plus works before the law too. He just reworded this to make it seem like he was his faith had to show works, faith and works. He's a liar. But if he had if he had uh, if he was sure on either uh, either item, faith or works, he could die in his sins and go to hell. And be torments. <laughs> And now we arrive at Calvary with a plan is set up by the ho householder, Ephesians 2.19, to save a sinner by grace through faith, completely apart from works of any kind, both before and after Acts 7. So now let us now get to the New Testament, New Covenant, hopefully not forgetting that we have learned by believing the book, we are studying well, rightly dividing it. He conjured before the law, it's, if his works showed he had faith. What, lot, what, what works did Lot show? Oh, that does mention a lot. <laughs> what, what, what works did Adam show? So, now I'll get the book. I'll read more for more later. i got more things in there. This is right from the horse's mouth. Right from the horse's mouth. Break is lying to you. Kim is lying to you. Slut is lying to you. Hoffman's lying to you. Davis is lying to you. Everybody infected with the PBI lie of faith works is lying to you. And this is not a, this is not a, uh, a if you, if you're a dispensationalist, this is not a minor issue. They don't look at it as a minor issue. They look at it as the essential issue. They're trying to con you and say, oh, well, we can disagree, agree to disagree. That's, that's, that's breaker. Because it's just a faith work system here. And we, but we all agree it's salvation by faith alone. So that's what counts. Well, he keeps teaching. It's salvation by faith. Telling you that God would allow a, a corrupt system, a lordship salvation system, where no one has assurance of salvation. No one's really saved because the blood corn thing wasn't shared, but they were saved, but they weren't saved. No one's regenerated. How are you going to talk to God if you're not regenerated? You have to have a human spirit. That's what regeneration is. Twist scriptures, lie about scriptures. You can lose the Holy Spirit. See, they lost their salvation. Saul was, you know, went to torments. Lie after lie after lie. And then they want to con you, you know, and say, one hand, one mouth. Well, this is really important. We can agree to this agree. It's just... You know, Old Testament issue. So we're not going to argue, you know, and then when they get, when they make their dispensational videos, everyone who doesn't believe this are liars, fraud, shallow pe teachers. They don't know what they're talking about. This is the truth. No, clearly the scriptures teach this. Lie after lie after lie. A man that crooked. I'll go back to the King James Bible issue with Ruckman. <laughs> Ruckman didn't bet spare any of these anti-King James guys. He whipped into them. Come liars, frauds, deceivers. That's what these guys are. 
They're not your buddies. They're not your buddies, people. They're not your friends. A man who lies to you is not your friend. A man who would con you like this and deceive you and won't get re won't take rebuke. You're a believer priest. Chad, I, I, I go to, Chad, go to break it and try to convince him about Noah. See what he says to you. See how he'll argue against you. And say, no, that can't be. They're all puffed up. They won't be, they will not be corrected by someone sitting in a pew just read the King James Bible and say, no, it doesn't say that. They've been educated. The very thing Muckman's always there again, the educated guy. Well, they got PBI. This is so clear. They're going to tell you that God, but you have no assurance of salvation. Moses wasn't sure of salvation. Moses talked to God. <laughs> no, assur no regeneration. The blood wasn't shed yet. How could this be? How did the sins cover? You know, he, when he got through it, he didn't go through David explaining the sins covered. That's why he skipped the second time when he read it, he skipped that. Sins are covered. That's not in the New Testament. It's Old Testament. It's a prophecy. It's a type. That was an example. And he never explained the problem. Paul was saying he wasn't justified by works. James was saying he was justified by works. A man lying to you is not your friend. This is not a peripheral error. This is a crucial element in their theology. That's why they're so vicious when people come after him on it. You see Gene Kim up there and he's talking about ad hominem towards me in, in violation of 1 Timothy 5.1 talking to an older man I believe his grandfather talking to me and talking about how I'm getting whiter and whiter pale and pale I guess and then saying no one's watching your videos anymore he got caught lying about Genesis 6. He can't believe it. He can't believe That's what these guys can't believe. They can caught in an error. Hoffman had the same problem. He got caught in a mistake in one of his footnotes. They can't believe it. That someone, not from their camp, can catch him in an error. So he gets all bent out of shape about it. And you hear what he called? He called the people who, who are listening to my videos? Goons. And you're goons. That's the spirit of Christianity. There's no spirit of Christianity in their people. I don't care if they're going to Honduras. I don't care where they're going. The Pharisees went across the seas too to make phosphates worse than uh, two fold worse than the uh, child held than they were. I don't care where he's going, what you think he's doing, when he's lying to you. They think because uh, they have a church or, or, or a ministry, you know, a missionary mission, a mission, a ministry, or they have a thing, that, that, that just lets them off the hook they can lie in the videos. That's what they think. Well, how dare you? Oh, we're putting out this, we're doing this, we're doing that. The Pharisees did like, well. And God commended him for that. Jesus Christ commended it. He said, follow them what they do correctly, but don't follow them what they're doing wrong. He never denied the fact that they were doing things under the law that were correct. He never said, no, you, you, no that, they're doing that, they're right. But he said, don't follow them in this area. And Gene Kim's got Abraham believing in the stars. He's about four times. <laughs> and he believed in the stars. And he believed, he believed in the Lord. He believed in the stars. And these people, I could just bust them up, you know, just crush them with my logic, my, my great logic. <laughs> and you got some guy out there, you know, just been a video copy, just making videos after video after video. I'll tell everybody to write the book, read the book. I'll do something you didn't do. Hold up a book and say, read it. And then come back to me and with the arguments. Dispensational salvation is the greatest threat to dispensationalism that's existed for the last 100 years. It undermines the very basis of God's attributes. And it rests scriptures. That's why any anti-dispensationalist would take it apart very quickly. And show from these guys some own videos. And they'll put up clips with these guys' videos and make them fools of themselves. And say, these, these, see, these, these are dispensationalists, see how stupid they are? And people say, yeah, you're right, they're all stupid. You can't read the book. <laughs> can't read the book. But you can't read a logical argument. So when I'm done with them, I'll get to uh, Breaker's dispensational, his video on dispensational. Now, he put three edits on the, on the Romans. I don't know why he did that. I got a funny feeling, because it really didn't change anything when he said the first thing. He said, well, I want to tell you who's really about saved Jews, unsaved Jews, and Gentiles. And he's added and he's put another video. He puts a whole video up and he deletes the other one. I think he's trying to set up a thing where... I, oh, I, I never said that. 
I never said that, and then I have a connection to a, a deleted video. You can't trust these guys. They're dishonest. They're dishonest. They have the Nickelodeons. They're Nickelodeons. That's why they respond, they react the way they do against any type of criticism. I didn't know ad hominem these guys. But they're going to ad hominem anybody who goes after them. Got a little ministry. You got a little little Bible, a little uh, uh, video here. 3,000 subscribers. All these guys. 200,000, 240,000 a break. For, uh, uh, 45, I think it's like 45,000, something like that. We live, you know, for, of ten, you know, about 25,000. 45. But you keep hammering with the truth. They get it. Somebody asked some questions. How dare they? I'll crush them. <laughs> I'll stop and put this up. Amen. Thank you.